This is Tech Tuesday. I'm Chad from Ascension Worship. Today we're going to talk about the basics of EQ. Hey, 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 what do you say? Yes, it's that time again. It's Tech Tuesday. All right, friends, uh, this week we're talking about EQ. If you remember in the uh, past couple of weeks, we've been kind of working our way through the uh, gain stage of your input. Um, we talked about our head amp gain. Um, we last week talked about the gate and this week we're talking about the EQ, um, and the low cut, uh, filter, which are on either side of the gate here. Um, so for this week, for our examples, uh, we will be using a, um, EQ from my recording program. It's a, it's a digital EQ. Um, but I will be referencing these EQs on either side here. Um, so I've got on the left side a typical analog EQ from an analog mixer, um, pretty standard. And then over on the right we have a another digital EQ but for a digital mixer. And I'll be referencing how these all kind of um, play into each other. Um, so we're going to be listening to a drum kit today. Um, I'm not focusing a whole lot on specific EQing techniques but rather explaining um, how EQ works and kind of giving you a from the ground up explanation. So here's our recording we're listening to. Nothing crazy, no EQs, no compression, no gating on this at this time. Just a straight up drum kit. So we'll start by talking about the low cut. Um, if you look over on our analog EQ, uh, there's a button that says low cut and it says 75 hertz. Uh, to put this in perspective for you, graphically it would look like this. Um, so this is on our EQ we're looking from left to right is from low to high. So our kick drum to our cymbals. So what this is doing is it's rolling off that low end. Um, so everything from 75 hertz down is starting to fade away. And, um, and then by the time it gets to the bottom, it's completely gone. This is a really great tool, um, especially for your, uh, your vocals, uh, acoustic guitars, really anything that doesn't need to be in the low end, or sorry, in the subs, um, especially with your vocals. If you have like four, six, eight or more uh, vocals, uh, even though they're not actually producing these frequencies here, they might be picking up in the microphone from the, like your bass guitar, your kick drum, the things that need to be in the subs. So what ends up happening is you get this smearing effect where the low end doesn't sound very solid because it's being picked up from multiple sources um, at different distances and it's just not a very good sounding thing. Um, so having this across all your vocals will immediately make uh, them sound better and it'll make your uh, your subs sound better because the kick and bass and so on uh, will not have a lot of competition for the space in there. Um, if you notice on here, again, it says 75 hertz. It's set to be there on digital uh, mixers. Uh, I don't have the picture on here, but there's a frequency knob that will allow you to move this up and down. So let's take a quick listen to it. We'll start by hearing what it sounds like at 75 hertz. And then I will go a bit extreme and show you uh, different ways you can use it. So I'm going to start with it off. Listen to the kick drum in particular. And now I'm going to turn it on. Hear how it's not really there anymore. Off. On. Now I'm going to work in the extremes and I'm going to crank this up a lot higher. So we get no sound. We've got the top end of the cymbal starting to come in. And then as we scroll down, we start to get the low end coming back with the kick drum at the bottom. So really useful tool for uh, cleaning up your subs. Um, if you're not sure where to start on the, the level for it, a great idea is to go with what the uh, typical um, uh, analog EQ is going to have. So 75... Um, 80, somewhere in there is usually a good safe bet. Um, 
But with things like your vocals, try turning them up until you start to hear it have a noticeable effect on your vocal and then turn it down a little bit below that and it will uh, definitely clean those up for you. On the opposite end of the spectrum, we have our high shelf, or sorry, high cut. This is exactly the same concept, but starting from your highs. Um, so let's take a quick listen to that. This is flat. And now I'm gonna start to lower down my high cut. Here the cymbals are coming and going. So this is again flat. And then adding in some high cut. Just now, boom, left over. Now the high cut isn't as popular as the, the low cut on most mixers. Um, you don't see a specific button for that typically. Uh, on this digital mixer, you can get to it by selecting your high. And then in this mode section here, you can change what kind of EQ is coming in that section. And so if you had an H cut, that's your high cut. And then you can use that frequency knob to adjust where that's at. Uh, I don't use these a whole lot. Uh, the times I do use them are usually when it's something like a bass guitar that doesn't uh, need a lot of high-end frequency, but maybe there's a noisy cable and that's where a lot of your hiss and, and electrical noise is going to come from. Um, so if I have to use it, I will use it in that instance to get rid of those unwanted frequencies from that signal. Um, but that's kind of a rare occasion for me. Uh, next, we're going to talk about the low and high shelves. Um, these are really cool um, if you are just starting out because uh, they're pretty much the EQ that you have in your car. Um, so we'll start by looking at our low shelf. Um, uh, this is like the base knob in your car. If you notice, it kind of flattens out and kind of looks like a bookshelf a little bit across here. Um, this just takes a certain frequency, in this case, 80 hertz. And if you notice in our analog EQ, it's also 80 hertz. Um, and 80 hertz down, uh, it just kind of boosts or cuts that signal. Um, this is really good for uh, either fattening up or um, taking away some of the low end from your mix. So let's uh, again listen to our drums and listen to that kick drum, and you'll hear it get boomier as I turn the low cut, or sorry, the low shelf up. So this is flat, and now I'll start boosting. Here, how we're getting a lot more body. Flat. Boosted. Now I'm going to start cutting. So this is flat. And then now I'm cutting. Cut. Flat. Cut. Flat. The high shelf is, again, the same, but uh, on the opposite end. So um, this is going to be like the treble knob in your car. And again, we'll look at our analog EQ. It says 12K, which is 12,000 Hertz. So that would look about like this graphically. Um, it's kind of hard to tell because it's scrunched up, but again, it's flattening out uh, going across. This is really good for adding or subtracting clarity from your mix. Um, so if you have an acoustic guitar and the picking noise um, you know, the pick hitting the strings is too much, then you'll probably take this down. If it's not enough and you want more clarity, then you'll turn it up. Um, terms for this are clarity, presence, or air. So again, let's, uh, let's listen to that recording and you're going to hear the symbols change as I move that around. So this is flat and now I'm going to start boosting. Hear the symbols start to come through a lot more. Boosted, flat, boosted, flat, flat, and now I'm going to start cutting, cut, flat, cut, flat. So again, these are currently set to uh, to match up with what we have on our analog EQ here. 
Uh, if you're on a digital EQ or a higher end analog EQ, uh, you will have frequency knobs where you can change these around as you see fit. Uh, and again, if you're not sure where to start, um, a lot of times when you uh, pull up a digital EQ for the first time, it will be kind of emulating an analog. Um, so in this case, 80 hertz and either 10,000 uh, hertz or 12,000 hertz is usually a good spot, uh, spot to start with these guys. Um, so now we're going to move on to, uh, we're no longer talking about uh, bass and treble like in your car. But now we're talking about the mids. Um, and so here's something I want to talk about before I get too far. Uh, looking at our analog EQ, uh, a lot of people get confused because sometimes you'll have an EQ that looks like this, but it'll say high, high mid, low mid, and low. But if you notice on this one, it says low frequency, and this is a different color knob, mid, and then high. So what's happening here is... Um, these blue knobs here are actually gain knobs in each frequency. So it's kind of like if I hit low on my digital EQ and then this gain knob, that's what's happening here. You know, and then if there was one mid, it would, the gain knob would be this one high, the gain knob for the high. Um, but people get confused and they're turning this knob, not knowing what it does. Well, the, the cool thing about most mids is that they're uh, it's called sweepable. And so as you turn this knob to the left, it's you know adjusting frequencies lower in the spectrum, closer to the kick drum. As you turn it up to the right, it gets closer to the high frequencies like the cymbals. So usually when you use these EQs, um, you wanna make sure that you're mostly cutting. Um, so you do something, I, I call it seek and destroy. So you'll move this around, you'll, you'll turn the gain up, you'll move the frequency around until you find the frequency you like the least, um, which we're gonna do in a moment here. And then once you really find that where it's really loud and like bad sounding, make sure you're only doing this during rehearsal, not during a service. Then you can turn the gain down past the, um, the U, which means that it's no longer flat, but it's being cut. And then you're getting rid of those frequencies that you don't wanna hear. Um, and that will really help to clear up your sound. Uh, when you're mixing and creating EQs, um, especially with your mids, you wanna consider uh, your EQ like you're sculpting a face from a piece of marble. Um, you don't add a nose by taking another piece of marble and gluing it onto the face and creating a nose, but rather what you do is you start sculpting away all the unwanted marble so that a face appears. Um, now, Again, with uh, your high shelf and your low shelf, sometimes that will break the rule because a lot of times um, I will use these like sweeteners, um, especially the high shelf. Um, a lot of times I find that you need to add uh, some highs in there just to get that clarity into your uh, system, uh, depending on what kind of mics you're using and your signal source. Um, so as long as you're not pushing these so far that you're distorting, you're okay. But definitely with your, your mids, it's... Um, typically best to be cutting things. So what I'll do is um, we'll play the, the sample through and I will sweep up and down so you can hear what's going on. And, uh, and then after I've done that once, there's a really annoying uh, pongy sound in the snare drum that just really bothers me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find it and I'm gonna cut it and I'm gonna show you what that sounds like before and after. So this is flat. Now I'll boost up our mids. And now I'm gonna move this as if I was moving a frequency knob. So we got our lower frequencies. And our higher frequencies. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find that pongy noise. It's somewhere around here. Hear that, it's starting to come out. And now I'm gonna take that below the line to get rid of it. So listen to it without that EQ in there. Oops. Pong. And then with the EQ. 
just doesn't have that in there anymore. Really useful. And then finally, um, again, we don't see this in this particular analog EQ, but this knob here that says Q, that is a width control for our mids um, or really any um, frequency that's uh, like this. You see this um, this little little hill here. Um, it's called a parametric EQ, a PEQ. Um, so your Q control decides how wide or tight that EQ is going to be. Um, so if you're doing boost, a lot of times you're going to want it wider. Otherwise, you're going to get this like wind tunnel effect that happens. It doesn't sound very good. Uh, and then a lot of times when you uh, are cutting, you want it to be tighter so you can just clear up that one group of frequencies there without you know cutting out a lot of things you don't need. So a lot of times we'll use this for things like I just did with that snare drum, that annoying sound that was in there. Um, with vocals, a lot of times if this, someone has a really prominent S sound to their voice, uh, you can use that to, to find that frequency and get rid of it. Um, with your, your lows, um, you might find there's a, sp a particular place where your voice sounds boxy, so like kind of like this. Um, usually you can use this to find somewhere in this area here the boxiness and cut that out, and uh, you can make that as tight or as loose as you need to, uh, to get the clarity that you're looking for without necessarily losing all your bottom end. Um, so again, let me uh, let you hear that wide and tight. So here's a really tight one here that sounds a little bit like a wind tunnel. And then we'll widen it out. It sounds a little bit more natural, but it's just very mid rangey. So, one final note um, one rule that has really worked well for me um, in the past. I used to always overdo my EQs just because I felt like I had to. Um, so I kind of learned when in doubt, zero it out. So if you're really not sure if what you're doing is helping your sound, turn it on and off, turn the bands on and off or the whole EQ. And if you can't tell that it's actually helping, if it's just different, then keep it flat. Um, it's better that you have a flat EQ than a crazy EQ that just doesn't sound good. So again, when in doubt, zero it out. Thank you for checking out this video. This has been Chad from Ascension Worship. Come back here every Tuesday for more Tech Tuesdays.